I'm Ann Nordell and this is my husband Eric. We've been farming here since 1983 in the village of Beech Grove, Pennsylvania. Our farm is about 90 acres, but we're mainly farming uh, about seven acres under cultivation managing for vegetables. We supply uh, locally to Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which is about 25 miles away. We do a farmer's market once a week and we supply restaurants and grocery stores. One of our goals when we started farming here was to keep this a two-person operation. And also we wanted to rely on horsepower uh, completely, uh, not only for uh, tillage, but also for fertility. So that limits our labor, our power, and our fertility source. And consequently, we rely on cover crops extensively. In fact, we take half of the land out of production each year just to grow cover crops. Uh, this has helped tremendously uh, with weed control, uh, maintaining the tilth of our silt loam soil, as well as uh, preserving moisture, which is an issue for us uh, because we don't have irrigation. One reason uh, we got into reduced tillage is really to optimize uh, the benefits of the annual cover crops. Intensive tillage can also often destroy everything we've gained, uh, so by minimizing the depth and intensity of tillage, uh, we can preserve more of those benefits. Becky. Ben, uh, we like to use the horses for several reasons. Uh, first of all, I just love uh, working behind the horses. That's what gets me going, it sustains my interest. They also uh, save the fossil fuel and pollution associated with that. And of course, uh, there's less problems with compaction and so on. You could take anything we're doing here and do it with a tractor, uh, probably with fewer passes and maybe a lot less aggravation. <laughs> It was about uh, 10 years ago that we started experimenting uh, with reduced tillage using this ridge till system. For years before that, we'd been using a winter killed cover crop, just working it into the surface of the soil for our early planted vegetables. And that worked great for conditioning the soil, erosion control, moisture preservation, but it was a problem in springs when it was cold and wet. So we started planting the cover crops on these ridges. Uh, it allows the soil to warm up and dry out faster in the spring. It also enables us just to peel the top off the ridge, uh, moving the cover crop residues into the pathway. If there are any winter weeds on the ridge top, it also sheds them into the pathway where it's easy uh, to control them with mechanical cultivation. One of the differences of doing uh, this kind of minimum tillage with the horses is we have to break it down into several steps. With a tractor, you could do all the ridge building steps in one pass. I simply don't have the physical strength to raise and lower that much equipment on the old uh, riding cultivator. Uh, so we do it in three steps. After broadcasting the seed, we build the ridges, then we come back, interseed the pathways, and then the final step is to roll the ridges with a colder packer. The idea is we want to kind of level them, make a nice uh, flat uh, seed bed, and also to create better uh, seed to soil contact uh, for the cover crop seed. It helps bring the moisture up uh, to germinate it. Typically, we plant uh, oats like you see here, and the peas coming up. This makes a nice mix of a small grain and legume. In this planting, we also have sorghum sudan grass uh, to boost uh, the carbon and uh, cover crop biomass. These steps we use for preconditioning the beds for planting in the spring. The residue cutter chops the residue. It also makes those slits in the soil. It kind of hairpins the residue in. So then we can go over with this rotary hoe and just lightly till the surface of the soil. Uh, this makes it possible for us just to make a furrow for transplanting. We'll just go right into it, or we'll scrape the top off the ridges for direct seeding. It probably looks like these tools aren't doing much, but that's really the whole point. We're just trying to loosen uh, the top inch of the soil. Uh, the residue cutter uh, slices the residue. It also cuts about an inch deep in the soil and then the rotary hoe uh, loosens that up. You can see we have this sort of crumb mulch uh, on the surface. When we peel this back to plant, you know, we'll have a nice seed bed uh, for planting. Here's a field where uh, crops have been uh, planted into our ridge till system. The previous fall, um, we built the ridges and planted a cover crop of oats and peas, and then they winter killed. They die back, um, and the following spring, 
what we did was we go through with the uh, residue cutter to cut up the residue and then we went through with the rotary hoe to kind of loosen up the beds and then all we did was we made a narrow slit in the soil and then planted the uh, transplants of onions and leeks. Because the uh, residue breaks down so fast, uh, it doesn't really provide uh, weed control or moisture control. So what we do is we uh, put down uh, weed straw in the pathways in order to preserve moisture. But the weeds have not been a big problem here. We haven't done any hand weeding in this field at all. Sustainable tillage practices that promote soil health are critically important to the long-term viability of farming. This poses a challenge for many commercial vegetable farms in the Northeast, where a lot of tillage is used to prepare seed beds, control weeds, and incorporate residues. This video explores a variety of tools and techniques that growers and researchers are using to reduce the intensity of tillage while maintaining crop production. Farmers can decide for themselves what practices best fit their operation.